Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present once again the Daenerys Aerospike SSTO which was designed to lift a fully fueled SpaceX Starship into orbit but we had a little bit of a problem as far as bringing it back down safely and I never did fit it with parachutes or anything to make a soft landing so again uh, just for those who uh, did not see this before this is an aerospike engine, and it has 36 thrust chambers, identical to the thrust chambers of the M1 engine, which was the largest hydrogen-oxygen engine ever to leave the paper napkin of an engineer, I guess, is how I'd put it. Uh, yeah, uh, so it was sort of based on the F1 engine, which was the largest single, uh, the most powerful single chamber engine that ever flew, and they changed the fuel mixture to hydrogen and oxygen had to change the turbo pumps and everything uh, but basically this is the same size as an m1 engine i don't know if i have it in the list but uh, uh, i sized it to the same thing and there's 36 of them so that's a huge amount of thrust which is necessary if we want to launch a starship fully fueled to orbit and so this is the aerospike part and the way aerospikes work is basically the thrust gets pushed against this uh, heat shielded plate and on this side it sort of acts like an extended cone whereas on the opposite side there obviously isn't a wall there uh, so at sea level it'll get uh, optimized sea level specific impulse because it basically operates at this nozzle ratio up here but then in vacuum it gets some benefit from the spike uh, it this particular part that I designed also has a shield to cover up all of that business so that when it comes back down because it is an SSTO that we want to recover uh, that will all be protected but we can't really use the aerospike uh, to land because it can't thrall down enough even if we only had four of the 36 thrust chambers active that would probably be too much at that point its thrust weight ratio is too high and the reason it's called Daenerys, it's a reference to Game of Thrones, is because it's the mother of all dragons, because that's the shape of the tank. It is like a SpaceX dragon capsule. So um, anyway, a complicated reference there. Some uh, people suggested that uh, it should be called Khaleesi instead, which was one of Daenerys's names, um, more directly related to her role as mother of dragons. But uh, we'll go with this because this uh, works as a rocket name, I feel. Uh, but I've made some changes, as you might have noticed if you recall the previous video. Uh, first of all, uh, the surface area of the bottom of this was not enough to slow the whole thing down. It was too heavy for this surface area. And so to compensate for that, I have added these. So that'll increase our surface area and hopefully help us to slow down. Uh, you notice the heat shielded side here. I added some mass to it, some dry mass to the whole thing to compensate for the fact that we have these. Though, to be honest, I'm not, I think it's being read, but I'm not sure. Uh, I've had some problem with the mass of this tank. Right now it says 650 tons, and then the aerospike itself is really heavy. Uh, this is 326 tons. And then in addition to all that, I decided that parachutes wouldn't be the best thing. And so instead, what we have are these, which are Raptor Boosters. So these are like the Super Dracos on Dragon, except they're Raptors. So uh, they're shielded. Actually, I need to shift it down so the shield doesn't clip into the body. Um, so that... Um, let's see, change it to that. So there's eight pods instead of just four pods for a dragon. And sorry, I'm adjusting this now. But yeah, two raptors in each, basically. And that gives us, you can see right now it has the payload on top. So it's not giving us a whole lot of delta V, but it's 9.3 seconds of burn time for each of these pods. The pods have the fuel in. And it's just 9.3 uh, seconds of burn time at full thrust. And with the payload on top, it seems to have a 1.29 thrust to weight ratio at sea level with all eight of the pods active. 
but we've got uh, four-way symmetry, so we can turn four of them off if necessary. I think that should be fine. Okay, so we're going to go with the original dragon idea of using the Super Dracos to land, but we'll be uh, not going on dry land. It'll be in the water. Uh, sort of like, I guess Super Heavy is going to be landing on platforms in the water as well. This will have to do the same thing. It's just too powerful to try and launch on land. The sound suppression situation would be horrendous. It's 17,000 tons. So, yeah, same deal. Uh, we would have to launch over the water. And not in the water. We're not doing the sea dragon thing. That's ridiculous. But, okay, so we got those flaps. And then in the water, uh, this shield would have to also protect those from corrosion and everything. And so would the flaps on the on the raptor pods. But, yep, hopefully uh, these flaps will also help it to float. I thought about adding floats to this, but that was getting overly complicated. So anyway, let's see if it can work. We only have an 880 ton payload on top right now. That's this. Sorry, it's an awkward shape, but that's how it is if we want to have this be a pod shape. And, and it's a pod shape because we want it to come back down, of course. But yeah, 880 tons is not as heavy as a fully fueled starship. So because we've added all these accoutrements, uh, the raptor pods, the flaps and everything, uh, we no longer can launch a fully fueled starship. It's a little bit smaller than that. Um, but it'll be better than still launching a whole bunch of missions to refuel the starship. So that's 880 tons, you know. So yeah, it's still an improvement. It would take a lot of missions to refuel starship, I think. And I don't want to go through that tedium if I can at all avoid it. So here, we'll test this out with the dummy payload, and we'll find out whether this works. Okay, so here we go, and we probably need those uh, flaps, the uh, shield open, throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. The plumes need work, and it's got a long spool of time, but there we go. Ooh, some recoil too. Uh, brings up a point though, the Raptor engines are gonna have a long spool up time too. That's one of the complications with uh, landing something in Realism Overhaul. Uh, and that includes the Falcon 9 with the Merlin 1Ds. That's much more complicated thanks to how long they take to rev up. Oh, we've got a roll here. That's not good. That makes me a bit worried. I'm worried that the colliders on the flaps might be, like, wrong a little bit. No? Well, okay, it stopped there. But, I mean, it should be able to control itself. The little... Oops, that's moving in the wrong place. Um, the little nozzles each have independent gimbling, so even though it's one engine, uh, they can control roll. Uh, we do have limited electric charge. I didn't put a fuel cell in here, so that's just going to be how it is. I don't know if it's safe to let go of the fairings. Probably have to wait until we get to orbit. As far as our full thrall burn time, it's 1 minute and 11 seconds, but we have thrall down. This thralls down to one quarter of its total throttle, so as if we were only using a quarter of the thrust chambers. But uh, I don't know if how exact whether an aerospike can do that or not because well I just don't know whether an aerospike can just shut off uh, three quarters of the thrust chambers and still operate properly in theory I don't see a reason for it not to be able to but it might complicate the flow along the airs I don't know oh it occurs to me that I want to do one thing I don't want to care about signal during this so I'm going to disable the comm network temporarily. I don't have comm sats deployed in this particular save, and that's not what we're trying to deal with right now. Gotta be tight. While we do have the fuel in the raptor pods, we, do, that we can't turn without the RCS fuel, which is hydrogen and oxygen. 
So our control system is dependent on keeping some hydrogen and oxygen for the orbit. And shut down. Okay, we're in orbit 69 meters per second. Great. That's not a lot. Okay, separation of fairings. Okay. And I'm just going to manually turn it because I'm concerned about how much we're going to use. Let's just shut down that engine and lower the shield now. Did my RCS work at all? Yes, it seems to. But it's not very powerful. These aren't small thrusters, mind you. They're 9.6 kilonewton thrusters at the top of Daenerys here. But... Oh... Hopefully persistent rotation is persistently rotating. Very, very slowly. Well, I'll take it. I just want to release the payload in a sideways sort of direction. Okay. Oh, it was uh, centered on the payload. Okay. And payload should be off. Let's see. Maybe I should increase the decoupling force on that somehow. 230 meters per second. Well, that's enough to deorbit with. A little bit inconvenient. All right, so we'll try and deorbit somewhere that will bring us back roughly to. We launched from Brownsville. Uh, over to the United States we would like to come back to, I guess. But we have to use the weak RCS to deorbit. Okay, this is going to be a long deorbit process. I think this delta V isn't our... That's the Raptor delta V that we're seeing there. 230 is the Raptor engine delta V. Because we turned off the main engine, it's not reading the delta V from the main tank now. Total mass currently, if you're wondering, is 1,126 tons. <laughs> the ending mass, the dry mass, is about 1,050. And still, one would regard that as pretty darn good, to be honest, considering the launch mass. We are taking advantage of the fact of scale, the fact that uh, the Mass scales sort of by the surface area. It's actually surface area plus a bit, uh, while the volume scales by the cube instead of by an area. But that's complicated because of aerodynamic stresses. It's not exactly like that. So tough to say on this kind of scale how heavy the tank would have to be. Okay, we've got some sunlight here. Almost done with the burn. Okay, I think 70 kilometers will be fine. So here we'll have it. Uh, actually, it doesn't need to do that right now. Okay, surface negative. Now we don't have a descent mode enabled on this. That It's possible that that could help things. Or it could just make it take longer for it to come back down. We need to increase the max stopping time, otherwise this will never turn to where it needs to go. I should have uh, act, uh, put the flaps on the action group, but I did not. Uh, the brakes action group, but I didn't. I didn't create any fancy hinges or anything. I could have put pistons and that. I thought about that, but maybe once I know it works, I'll make it a little bit fancier. It's not a huge increase to the surface area, I mean... But it is an increase to the surface area, so we'll take what we can get. Okay, well, the sort of roll issue that we saw during launch is sort of hinting a little bit here. We can see the roll maxed out there with the RCS. We'll see how persistent ro uh, persistent rotation Persistent an issue that happens to be. 
No, well, no, no, it's going the other way. Maybe it's just the normal roll wobble. But I'm worried about the roll. Also worried about actually stopping this properly. We don't have a whole lot of fuel. And the Raptors don't throw down as much as the Aerospikes do. I think they go down to 50%. So we have at full thrust 9 seconds. We might end up at uh, partial thrust uh, 20 seconds worth of burn time. But I don't think I can count on the suicide burn countdown. I'm not sure. And then there's the whole ignition timing issue. So we are currently over the Gulf of Mexico. Unfortunately, we're not really ending up where, uh, of course, uh, this track is a little bit off from any sort of normal landing location, but who knows? Actually, uh, possibly to set up, uh, possible to set up a facility off the coast of Puerto Rico or something, but oops, we just go inside the pod. We are slowing down now and sufficiently well. Normally, I like the velocity, the surface velocity to be um, one tenth the altitude or less. So, well, we're not quite there. I want, I would like it to be 6,400 right now, 6,300, 6,200. So, once again, we're not quite getting enough drag but uh, it's probably improved. We can see the overheating here. That's why I've got that sort of number in my head where I just divide the altitude by 10 to get the velocity that I want. And that should be good enough to avoid the overheating. But we got some overheating. And G-forces. Having a descent mode would help with the G-forces, but let's see, we're at 6G's there. This would never come back down with people on it, so... It's just a matter of how resilient we need to build the structure. It looks like about 8G's it tops out at, and we're off the coast of Haiti? Uh, 7.9G's. So, do I believe the suicide burn countdown? Hmm... First of all, it's a little bit suspicious that it's counting down in like, and not at all match. Well, but, but there's drag and everything, so it's complicated. Yep, it's complicated. This is where some sort of landing script would help. I mean, we have 234 and our speed is less than that, so that's good. In principle, we can do this. Okay, ignition. Uh, I think I'd throw down too much. Oop. Well, we had enough uh, crash capacity. Oh, did we lose the air spike? I think we lost the air spike. I, I came in way too fast. And we lost the air spike. This is a little bit more buoyant than I thought. That's not... That's not right. <laughs> I, I would accept if it was floating along this line. But the way it's floating right now is a little bit wrong. And I don't know why it would be down there. Hmm. I don't know much about buoyancy in Kerbal Space Program, to be honest. So I don't know exactly how to fix that. That is interesting. Something about the node, maybe? Okay, so if I timed it right, I think we could have splashed down safely without breaking the air spike, but we definitely broke the air spike this time. But improvement, we're getting there. So, and I think we can do it. Uh, I think this can launch 880 tons to orbit and come down in some semblance of safety. Oh, we lost all the raptor pods. I just realized that. How the heck did we lose the raptor pods anyway? They're up there. I don't understand. I don't know. Maybe the... I don't... Maybe, in theory, debris from the aerospike knocked out the raptor pods? I don't know. So, okay, curious. Maybe I overdid the 
crash tolerance on this, but <laughs> and not on the Raptor pods or the Aerospike. Hmm. It is a very suspicious part at the moment, given the way it's floating. All right, so yeah, but I think it could be landed safely by somebody with the appropriate landing experience. Let's put it that way, or or a landing script. So that's good. I clearly need to fix a few things, but yeah. Yep, this is interesting. This gives us possibilities. Well, anyway, with that, with the nearest tank anyway floating in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.